There existed two people which the Prophet ﷺ told us about in the time of the Prophet. And they used to challenge each other in everything they did. They loved each other for the sake of Allah. And they tried to pray and beat each other in prayer. So they pray night prayers and they would fast more days. When this friend heard about his brother, that he would fast two days, his brother would fast three days. When he heard about him that he was fasting, every Mondays and Thursdays the other brother would fast day on day off. When he donated from his wealth this much, the other brother would beat him and donate that much. One day they went out fighting a battle against people who were attacking the Muslims. Driving people out of their homes. So they thought this is a great chance to reach the highest places in paradise. Because Allah loves those who defend the weak. So they set out and they began to fight in the battle until they lost each other. Then one of them was a captive. They began to talk to him. He began to laugh. And the mushrikeen said, why are you laughing? He said, I am laughing because Alhamdulillah, I am going to die heed and beat my brother to Jannah. And they said, what the? The same person like you we caught before, he said the same thing before he died. And then he started to cry. And Allah says that they met each other in paradise. story of one of the famous Sahaba. Julaidi was, you know, he was not attractive Sahabi. Like, look, you look at the color of their skins, you look at the shape of their faces and the size of their bodies, you know, you, you look at, you do these things. But Julaidi had none of that. He was not the most attractive Sahabi. But at the same time, he was not rich. You know, that's two things that no, no wife will take that. One of the narration he said to Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, if I believe in you and I believe in Allah, would I go to Jannah? He said, yes. Would my wife be from the people of Jannah? He said, yes. He said, so Allah does not care about my shape, my color. He said, no, Allah does not care about that. He said, how come these people would never marry me their daughters? The messenger of Allah said, I'll find you a wife. Don't worry, I got you. Messenger of Allah, he said, do you know the family so and so? He said, yes. Family from the Ansar, from the people of Medina. He said, go to them and tell them the messenger of Allah is asking for your daughter for you. So he went to the house, he knocks on the door. They say, welcome Julia, what can we do for you? He said, the messenger of Allah is proposing to your daughter. Before he's finished, they say, Allah Akbar, Rasulullah is going to marry you. He say, no, 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 it's for me. They say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. His wife, you know, she said, what's wrong? He, she, he said, Rasulullah he proposed to our daughter. And she said, oh, mashallah. He said, not for him, for Julaibib. She said, La ilaha illallah. Couldn't he, uh, you know, couldn't that be for Abu Bakr? For Umar, for someone like Mughira, why Julaibi? So the husband said, I can't give you an answer. Let me talk to my wife. While they were talking about this, the daughter, she heard about what they're talking about. She said, what are you doing? He said, inna lillah, Rasulullah, he wants you to marry this man. She said, subhanallah, are you not true believers? How could you reject the suggestion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How could you? I'm going to marry this man. I want to marry him. So this man married this young lady, alhamdulillah. He was the happiest and the messenger of Allah. Made dua, ya Allah, make them the happiest couple. Give them the wealth from sources that they never imagined. Shortly after that, fi sahih Muslim, and after the war was ended, after the war was you know, over, Messenger of Allah said to the Sahaba, you know, are we missing anybody? So they say, Ya Rasulullah, we're missing so and so, and we're missing so and so, and they start counting people. And they say, anyone else? No. He said, but I'm missing Julaibib. Julaibib came with us. Where is he? So they went 
and they looked and they found him dead radiyallahu anhu so the messenger of allah he weep over his body and he said he's of me and i am of him and he removed the dirt and the dust from the face of julaybib and he hugged him and he said subhanallah now ya julaybib you can marry from the women of jannah What about Mus'ab ibn Umair, who resembled the Prophet Sallallahu in his appearance and character, who the Prophet Sallallahu looked at him and knew that he has a beautiful tongue, so he sent him to Medina. He was the one who went to Medina, and when the Prophet Sallallahu migrated from Mecca to Medina, he found 8,000 people from Medina that were singing Tala al-Badru alayna min thaniyat al-wada'. Where did they come from? From Mus'ab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu. Before Islam, he was the wealthiest. Before Islam, he was the most handsomest. Before Islam, he used to look after himself that he used to put so much cologne and would look after himself so much that the women of Mecca, when they smelt his perfume, they would stand in a line to wait for him to pass, wanting to attract him. Yes, this was Mus'ab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu. When he embraced Islam, he donated everything he had of his wealth in the cause of those who are more in need. And then in the battle of Uhud, Mus'ab ibn Umayr fighting like a lion when a spear attacked him. And he fell to the ground. And then the Prophet Sallallahu and the companions after the battle was over, he came to bury the Muslimin. And then when they looked at Mus'ab ibn Umayr, they searched through his wealth and he did not find anything with his wealth to cover him. All they could find in his house was a piece of cloth to wrap him up in, the kafan. And when they would cover his head, his feet would show. And when they would cover his feet, his head would show. Oh, Mus'ab ibn Umayr, we did not find anything of the wealth just to cover your whole body and bury you in. You donated it all for those who were in need. In Jannah is where we shall meet. Al-Firdaus al-A'la, my dear brothers and sisters. Haritha radiallahu anhu and his mother, Ummu Haritha. He wanted to go out one time with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also in one of the battles. And then when they went out, my dear brothers and sisters, the Muslimin arrived to a certain place where there was a well. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to one of, the, one of the Sahaba to go and, and protect that well at night when the Muslims are asleep. So that no one can come to that well and take it over from the enemies. And then in the middle of the night, when the Sahaba was protecting that well, all of a sudden Haritha woke up. He woke up to go to the well to drink because he was extremely thirsty when he was asleep. And then when he reached the cliff, he was about to go down into the well. This Sahaba, he looked up into the cliff and he thought it was one of the enemies coming to take over the well. And so he armed his arrow and targeted towards him. And the arrow struck Haritha radiallahu anhu right in his chest. And then he fell to the ground. And then this Sahaba raced towards him in order to see who it was. And then to his sadness and sorrow and to his shock, he found that it was Haritha radiallahu anhu. And as Haritha was dying, he said, La ilaha illallah. And his soul escaped from his body. And then Umm Haritha came along, his mother, searching for her son. When she saw all the soldiers returning back, she would look at that person and look at this person to see if it was Haritha. But every time she went from one companion to another, it was someone else. And then she grabbed one of the companions and she said to him, My son, my son, where is my son? And then the companions would say, Your son Haritha? No, he wasn't in the battle. He wasn't in the front lines. And she began to cry and scream. And she said, show me where the Prophet ﷺ is. And she said to him, Ya Rasul Allah, قل لي tell me, my son Haritha, is he in Jannah? Or is he not? Wallahi, if you tell me that he is not in Jannah, you will see what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this world upside down. Then the Prophet ﷺ looked at her and he yelled and he said, Ya Ummu Haritha, have you gone mad, Ya Ummu Haritha? Have you lost your mind? Inna Haritha qad mata shaheedan wa inna Haritha qad asaba al-firdaus al-a'la. And he is not only in Jannah, it is many Jannat, it is many paradises, and he has targeted the highest place in al-firdaus al-a'la. The Prophet ﷺ once sent Sa'thalaba on an errand. And then Thalaba went. It only would have taken him half a day to complete this errand. When on his way, Thalaba was on his way back to the Prophet ﷺ. When he reached close to Medina, and he was passing by a small village which was built of small tents. And then he heard 
one of the tents as though there was water being spilt inside like a shower as though there was something someone bathing in there Thalab did not have the right to open that tent and to look who was inside of there however his lust deluded him into opening a tiny crack in that tent and he looked inside saw a naked woman bathing he remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what have I done? Allah will now send a verse down to the Prophet Sallallahu saying that I am one of the hypocrites. And he forgot all about returning back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was too scared. He did not want to hear anything because he was almost certain that there was a verse sent down in the name of Thalaba. He is a munafiq. So instead of going to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he ran away and he headed towards the cliffs. When he didn't return to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet began to become worried. And he said, where is Thalab? I hope nothing has happened to him. So he sent his companions outside to look for him. And when they went and they tried and they returned, they said, Ya Rasulullah, we don't know where he is. And they kept the search going for about a week. Until finally the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent Abu Bakr and Umar for a special task to look for him and find him. He said, go, look out into the outskirts of Medina, into the cliffs and the hills, into the forests and in the trees, search every tent, ask anyone that you see and search for Thalaba. I'm very worried about Thalaba. And so they went out and it took them weeks to search for him until finally they approached this village where they found a shepherd with his goats. And they approached him and said, Have you seen a young man? His descriptions are so and so. He is of this height. And his name is Thalaba. He said, Are you asking about the crying boy? They said, What crying boy? He said, The boy that weeps a lot. There is a young boy that sits up in those cliffs over there. Our village hears him every night crying. And we don't know what his matter is. Every day he comes down and he drinks a bit of milk from my goats. And then he would drag himself back up into the mountains. And they said, this is surely Thalaba. So Abu Bakr and Umar went up to the mountain and they searched for him until they found him. Sheltered away underneath leaves. His clothes were, were torn apart. He was withered away, he was so skinny and he was extremely sick. They thought that he was dying. So then they grabbed him. And as soon as Thalaba saw them, he tried to struggle and run away, but they chased him and caught him. And then they grabbed him. And he said, please, please, don't take me to the Prophet Wasallam." They said, what is wrong with you? Take a hold of yourself, Ya Thalaba. I know what you are. I know why you are taking me to him. Allah has sent a verse down concerning me, hasn't he? He said, Ya Thalaba, we don't know why the Prophet Wasallam is asking for you. Please come with us. He said, yes, I know why. I know why. They said, Wallahi, we have to take you to him. It is a commandment from the Prophet. And they placed him in his house. And they told him, Thalaba is at his home. So the Prophet ﷺ came to him. And he kneeled down and kissed him on his forehead. And he said to him, Ya Thalaba, what is wrong? And he said, Ya Rasulullah, are you hiding it from me? He said, what am I hiding? He said, Allah has sent down the verse concerning me that I am one of the hypocrites, hasn't he? The Prophet ﷺ looked at him and he was crying. And the Prophet ﷺ said to him, No, Ya Thalaba. Allah has not sent anything in your cause. And then he said, I am going to be punished, Ya Rasulullah. And then the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Ya Thalaba, what are you fearing? I did a great sin, Ya Rasulullah. And then the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Are you fearing the anger of Allah? He said, Yes. A mu'min also has another belief, and that is hope. What do you hope for? What do you wish for? What do you yearn for? And he said, I hope for the mercy of Allah and His forgiveness. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, Then ask Allah with that which you are hoping for. And make your assumption about Allah good. You will find it. And the Prophet ﷺ read on his head and made a dua for him. Then all of a sudden, Thalaba said, Ya Rasulullah, I feel as though there are thousands of ants crawling on my body. Can you really feel that? And he said, Yes, Ya Rasulullah. It is death. It has now come and struck on you. You are dying, Ya Thalaba. So say, La ilaha illallah. And then Thalaba began to repeat those words. 
until finally his soul escaped from his body. He was forgiven. But because, my dear brothers and sisters, he used the hope that he had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he desired paradise. So Allah forgave him. The last person to enter Jannah will be a person who will be in Jahannam. This man, the hadith says, will walk a step and fall a step and the fire him a step. He's in calamity. So he says, Ya Rabb, release me from this. He complains to Allah Rabbul Izzah, so the Lord of mercy and honor tells him, if I release you from the fire, do you promise not to ask for anything more? So he says, by your honor, Ya Rabb, I swear, you take me out of here, I won't ask for another thing. So the Dhul Arsh al Majidin Fa'alu Lima Yurid takes him out of Jahannam. And when he comes out of it, he looks back towards it and he says, Glory be to the one that saved me from this. Not another person from the Awaleen or the Akhirin is more honored than me. You see, because of where he was, in comparison, this is heaven. So in his mind, there is nothing, more, no one is more favored than him. So he comes outside Jahannam. And then Allah Rabbul Izzah orders for a tree to come out in front of him and for a spring of water. So he's at the gates of Jahannam. So when he sees water, he longs for it. But he's promised that he can't ask for anything more. So, and one of the hadiths is, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, Oh Allah, Oh Allah. Not one thing to ask, but at the same time, it's too tempting. So then he says, Ya Rabb, take me close to that tree and that water so that I might sit under its shade and drink from its water. So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, O oh, son of Adam, how would you break your word? Didn't you promise me that you wouldn't ask for anything anymore? So the hadith says Allah Rabbul Izzah excuses him because he's been shown something that he has no patience towards. So when he goes under the tree and drinks from its water and enjoys its shade, another tree bigger and better comes out in front of him near the gates of Jannah and the stream is running alongside it. So he looks at it. Oh Allah, take me to it, Ya Rabb, closer to that tree. So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, O oh son of Adam, how you break your word. So Allah Rabbul Izzah takes him to that tree. It is by the gates of Jannah. So when he sits under the tree and enjoys the shade and drinks from the water, he looks and he can see inside Jannah. And the heart longs for it and the perfume and the scent of Jannah. So he says, Ya Rabb, enter me into Jannah. So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, O oh son of Adam, how you break your word, you promised. So he says, Ya Rabb, enter me into there and I won't ask for anything else. So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, enter Jannah. So when he enters, he says, all the places are taken. Where do I go? So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, it is my servant. What if I give you the size of the kingdom of one of the kings of the dunya? So he says, Ya Rabb, you make fun of me and you are the Lord of the world. So Ibn Mas'ud, when he's narrating this, laughed. So they asked him, Ya Ibn Mas'ud, why did you laugh? He goes, because the Prophet of Allah laughed. And we asked him, why did you laugh? He said, my Lord laughed when the man said this. And in another hadith, what if I give you a place the size of the earth? Granted, and another like it, and another like it, and another like it.
and another like it. And when he reaches the fifth one, the man says, Radit, Ya Rabb, Radit, I am satisfied, Ya Rabb, I am satisfied. And Sa'id al Khudri is in the gathering of Abu Huraira when he's mentioning the hadith. So he said, I bear witness that I saw the Prophet say, For you as that, and ten times like it the size of one of the kingdoms of the kings of this world for the last person to enter Jannah.